an acceptance is presence. Unconditional love, which is in actuality acceptance, pure acceptance. This frequency trumps all frequency. This frequency trumps all frequency. It nullifies all other frequencies. Acceptance. It clears everything. Blank sheet of paper. You get an absol absorb all this stuff and all this blowing up and trauma and this and finance and so on and so forth. The frequency within you trumps all of those frequencies and nullifies everything. Grounding. Grounding yourself. Grounding yourself. Returning to neutral. To zero. Nullifying all the other frequencies that have come before. Just, just cutting it all off. Coming back home. Grounding yourself. Paying attention to yourself. When you pay attention to that which is within you, which is acceptance and unconditional love, you are a tower. You connect yourself with the higher, highest frequency of all, the nature of God itself. So, let us continue. The more you pay attention to yourself, the more you will assimilate the energy of yourself. We talked about that. What you pay attention to long enough, you will assimilate. You will, you will mirror. So, we're talking about the self. As you pay attention to the self, you will assimilate yourself, the truth of yourself. The more you're in a place of acceptance or in that space of unconditional love with yourself, the more you become that, the more you recognize that is who you are in truth. And of course, your vibration has to be reflective in your external environment. It will. Your vibration will switch your dimension. It will change the reality that you exist in. Completely. It will change the reality that you exist in completely. You will literally jump dimensions when you pay attention to yourself. When you cultivate the unconditional love within, because once again, that's the highest of all frequencies. When you pay attention to this energy, you will literally jump dimensions. You will change realities. Because once again, you paying attention to yourself, you will assimilate the true nature of yourself. This assimilation of yourself will give you the most satisfying feeling that you can ever experience amongst the external world. It will give you the most <laughs> stimulating experience that you can ever experience in the external world. When you assimilate yourself, when you recognize your own true nature and allow that to crystallize in your external environment. Through giving yourself that attention, through paying attention to yourself. We talked about this last week. Billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. Marketing dollars are spent every 10 minutes attempting to get your attention. Tempt attempting to get your attention, to get you to pay attention to the external world. To what they sell and what this person is selling. This theory that theory, this history, why you deserve this or what you're supposed to be doing and what belief system this is and how, how you know if you're spiritually evolved and what you need to ascend and what you need to get all the bad energy from around the house, what you got to buy to or what you got to burn to do. Once again, all of these marketing dollars spent on a daily basis just to get you to pay attention to it. Just to get you to pay attention. It just wants God's attention. Because once again, your attention is priceless. 
What you, what you pay attention to crystallizes itself into reality. What you don't pay attention to dissolves. What you don't give your energy to dissolves. To non-existence. Of course, there is only existence. Energy is created nor destroyed. But once again, what crystallizes in your reality is based on what you give your attention to. What you pay attention to, what you emotionally invest in. That, that is what decides or deciphers what appears in your reality. What are you giving your emotional attention to? What are you investing in? What are you getting emotional about? Emotion. Emotional. Energy in motion. What are you giving your energy in motion to? Everything exists, but once again, only things that exist for you and your reality is what you give energy to. What you give your energy in motion to. Those are the only things that exist in your reality. So, of course, as conscious beings, we're becoming more wise with where we invest our emotions into. Where are we giving, where, where are we giving the motion of attention to or energy to? We get to decide. We always get to decide. And knowing that we get to decide, we have the ability to choose to move with that which harmonizes with us. We get to choose that which moves in harmony with us. We choose to pay attention to the things that resonate with us. As conscious beings... As spiritually mature beings, as emotionally mature beings, we get to consciously choose what moves with us. We get to choose. When you choose consciously, when you continue to choose consciously, based on your recovery, because it is a recovery, when you choose consciously how to move and what to move with, you'll experience more of the enjoyment that this universe, which is you, which is your own creation, is constantly providing you. Similar to your own playground, it is your universe. It is your reality. Now, this isn't out of balance. Acknowledging all aspects of life, even those which you do not consciously prefer, is necessary. We're not ignoring life or taking away validity from different aspects of life that we don't necessarily resonate with. They do exist. And it's okay that they exist because, once again, our own nature is that of unconditional love. The love is unconditional. Every, everyone gets to sit at the king's table, at the queen's table. However, what gets the, the energy to reproduce itself are the things that resonate with the reality that we desire to exist in. That's what receives the energy. The conscious energy of creation, the flourishing energy of our manifestation abilities. 
that's what receives most of the energy. Of course, those experiences that we do not prefer, they've served us to this point as catalysts, as pillars of our own awareness. They were necessary. They're still quite necessary for so many of us as we heal and exist or evolve beyond through our intentions of certain emotions, certain feelings. These things are necessary for us to realize certain things, that discomfort that we feel. That discomfort is basically about alerting us to that which doesn't align with us. It's a little nudge. Sometimes it's a shove. But they're little nudges like this doesn't resonate with you. This doesn't feel comfortable. This doesn't feel good. You should look at this. It's poking on you. You should look at this. That's why it's uncomfortable. The body is intelligent. It's going to attempt to protect itself. Your guides are attempting to protect you. Through awareness, they give you the signs and symptoms and poke, poke at you a little bit energetically to say, consider this. It's uncomfortable. Consider this before it turns into a fire, before it turns into an upheaval or a tragedy. Look at this. I'm making it a little uncomfortable for you so you can pay attention. Your gods are gentle. The spiritual hierarchies in general are gentle, acclimating, to attempting to get you to acclimate to certain decisions, not forcing you, not um, you know uh, taking notes when it comes to our idea of what karma is. Or somebody writing down all the things that you do, and they're gonna make sure that. Other people do this stuff to you. It's not that black and white, and it doesn't work like that. Nobody's walking around judging you with a pen and pad, writing down the things that you do um, to hurt people or hurt yourself or whatever the case may be. Nobody's doing that. It's just, once again, this is all, uh, you know, draconian uh, fear propaganda. Programming. No one's following you. No one's... Uh, in your head, making sure you don't do nothing stupid or whatever the case may be. All of that is, this is a free will uh, zone. All get to do what they decide to do with their energy. All get to invest where, where necessary, where they feel necessary. As an opportunity to become mature, to be more mature, to be more sophisticated, the more sensitive you are, the more information that you're receiving from life, you're able to make more default, uh, informed decisions intuitively based on your own internal guidance, based on your own internal guidance. Nobody's going to tell you or nobody's here to tell you that you're wrong or you should do this or you should do that. This ain't right. Don't do this. Nobody here to do that. That's what you do to children. You're not a child, beloved. You're here to decide on make your own decisions. That's why there's no right or wrong. It's about you following your own heart. You becoming proficient at listening to your own intuitive guidance versus having a uh, Someone, your master or teacher or guru or whatever, tell you what to do will give you answers to your questions. Like, no, everything is integrated in your experience. There are no mistakes. There are no, there's no wrong answer. It's about you doing what feels comfortable for you and allow that to reflect where you are in your spiritual evolution. Do what's comfortable for you based on your own free will. Once again, in the heavens, there's nobody that's going to walk behind you or walk around you to make sure you ain't messing nothing up. You're just supposed to be mature. You're supposed to have gone through the experiences to recognize the universal laws in order to live in harmony and coexist with an infinite amount of other beings from other galaxies and solar systems and planets and what have you and not... Uh, 
not just, you know, be messing up, destroying stuff. Posted, once again, be a mature soul, to be an old soul. To know how, you know, once again, civilized, mature, loving, harmonious, unconditional. That's something that's supposed to be embodied within you through the experience, but it's your choice. No one have, has to sell you on that. No one should have to give you a most motivational speech about uh, not calling people names and not being harsh, not being judgmental, not value judging and all this kind of stuff. Like no one's going to do that. No one's here to do that. This is something that you embody through your own experiences, through your own realizations as you become mature and sophisticated enough to recognize and honor yourself, respect yourself and reflections of yourself naturally. Not through some class, not through somebody having to tell you that. <laughs> it's something that happens inside of you. That's why you call masters. It's the path of self mastery.